Welcome to A Haunting in the Hall, a scary stories program for kids in grades four and up. Tonight's story is from Ask the Bones, scary stories from around the world, selected and retold by Ariel North Olson and Howard Schwartz. This story comes from the United States and it's called The Evil Eye. Long ago, there were two sailors who couldn't stand each other. And there they were, mates on the very same sailing ship. One was a feisty old man named Bell, better known as Ding Dong, and the other was a pesky fellow called Liverpool George. George was not a superstitious man, but Ding Dong was. And that's why Ding Dong suspected the worst, when he noticed that one of George's eyes was blue and the other was brown. George didn't tell him that one was made of glass. Whenever Ding Dong was around, George flaunted his tattoos because he knew how much they upset the superstitious old sailor. Ding Dong didn't mind the pictures of sea monsters encircling George's legs or the great dragon on his chest or the whales on his arms, but he feared the pictures of a sinking ship on George's back, the cats on his shoulders, and the crowing hens on his wrists. He thought they all foretold disaster, especially the cats, because he said they carried gales in their tails. So what did Ding Dong do? He crossed his fingers and spat in his hat to protect himself. He could hardly stand to look at the tattoos. And what did George do? He just grinned and added more. Whenever the ship docked, George rushed ashore to look for tattoo artists. They decorated him with snakes and lightning bolts and more hens and more cats. George showed them all to Ding Dong and Ding Dong got so upset he started whittling in his spare time just to have little pieces of wood he could snap in two in hopes of a lucky break. But Ding Dong doubted that anything could protect him from George's cat and hen tattoos. They'll sink us yet, he muttered, mark my words. And he began watching for a chance to shove George overboard. George had almost run out of space for new tattoos. He had just one little circle of unmarked skin left about the size of a silver dollar, and that circle was in the crook of his arm. George wanted his last tattoo to make Ding Dong's hair stand on end, so he searched in port after port until he found an artist who could tattoo a fearsome, evil eye. And when George lowered or raised his forearm, that eye seemed to open and close. But George wasn't happy. He wept because he could never get another tattoo. But the tattoo artist said, don't worry, there are lots more ways to get decorated. And he sent George downstairs to the glassblower shop to buy himself a fancy glass eye. George had never seen the kinds of eyes in this glassblower made. He was a real artist. The eyes came in all colors, red, yellow, purple, green, and blue. And not one had a regular iris in its center. One had a silver star, another had a sickle moon, and yet another had a coiled snake, white with red fangs. That was the one George liked best, the coiled snake in the middle of an eye of navy blue. He handed his money to the glassblower, put in his fancy new eye, and hurried back to the ship. Ding Dong was standing on the deck coiling a rope, so George crept up from behind and put his arm in front of Ding Dong's face. Then George flexed his elbow, making the tattooed eye open and close. Ding Dong spun around and found himself staring right into George's new glass eye. For a moment, Ding Dong froze, his eyes wide and his mouth agape. Then he ran below to grab a lucky horseshoe from his sea chest to nail to the ship's mast. Ding Dong was sure George was trying to bewitch him. So late that night when George was sleeping, Ding Dong tried to scoop the glass eye right out of George's head. And when George woke up bellowing, Ding Dong threatened to hit him with a belaying pin. There isn't room on this ship for the two of us, he shouted. That was too much even for a prankster like George. He vowed that if anyone were to jump ship, it would be Ding Dong. George knew that neither his tattoos nor the snake in his new glass eye had driven Ding Dong away. So George went ashore at the very next port to look for something more powerful. And that was where he found an artist who was a magician with molten glass. This glassblower had made ghost ships with sails like cobwebs. He'd made glass islands that looked like monsters' hands ready to drag sailors into the depths of the sea. But most astounding of all were his glass eyes. They sat on the shelf side by side, looking at George as intently as he looked at him. But George didn't want any of the ready-made ones with ravens and rats in their centers. So he told the glassblower what he needed and sat down to wait. The glassblower lit a flame, heated the glass, and blew creating the evilest of evil eyes, layer by layer, rings of green and purple and black encircled a little red spot in the middle. 
and that red spot seemed to stick out, making even the glass blower shudder. He cooled the eye and handed it to George. Never take it out and stare at it, he said. Just wear it all the time. George paid him and rushed back to the ship. He saw Ding Dong aloft, splicing a rat line, so he climbed up the rigging himself, then he stared at him face to face, eye to eye. Ding Dong nearly went mad that he couldn't turn away. The evil eye seemed to hold him in its spell. He stared back horrified and then fell silently to the deck below. Now either the evil eye scared Ding Dong into falling and he died from the fall, or that evil eye killed him outright. George needed to know which. He hadn't planned to kill him. The captain and the crew thought it was an accident, but George didn't change their minds. But he couldn't sleep. He couldn't eat. He had to know if the glass eye really had that much power. So he went down to the galley to ask the cook if he could borrow his mirror. Then he climbed up into the crow's nest at the top of the mast, the only place in the ship where he could be alone. He held the mirror in front of his face and stared directly into his evil eye. Some say a monster wave hit the ship just then, and that's why George fell on the deck and died. The glass blower said it really wasn't the fault of the wave at all, but there was only one person who could tell for sure, and that's the man who bought poor George's eye years later from a second-hand shop where his mate sold it. And now that man with the evil eye is walking around here somewhere right now. Beware and sweet dreams.